So let's take a look at the uh, look at the market. So this is the S and P that we show live in the room. We have three setups that will show in the room. The first setup that we show in the room. is the outer edge slingshot trade. We had two big ones yesterday. They're called the swing highs in the S&P yesterday. The second setup is what we have running right now. It's still running from today. It had another breakout here at 7 o'clock this morning. The second setup is a zone breakout. That's what we have at this yellow price bar that formed, zone breakout. We got the trail still running on this, as you can tell. And the third setup we have in the room is called the failure trade, which is a corrective wave against the zone when there's a possible trend change. So we have those three setups in the room. All three setups with the new software for you guys will form a yellow trigger bar or a yellow candle when it forms right here now this has a trail going or another setup buy setup breakout was at this level but since it's trailing it's not going to get an additional setup because i have a strategy running in the background behind this so those are our three setups we have the outer edge slingshot setup the zone breakout and the failure setup all three on your own charts, on any market you look at, we prefer the S&P in the room. That's why we show only the S&P. We'll form a yellow trigger entry when there's an entry. Now let's take a look at yesterday's action. We had beautiful price action yesterday. And let's get into these setups this morning and what we're going to look at. So going into yesterday, at 8.30 yesterday, and let's go through the whole entire session from 8.30 all the way to the close into today's session. Let's go over those three setups. So first of all, we have this zone that tells us the trend. These are This is our zone. We've had this tested within artificial intelligence program the last 30 years to tell us that these confirm that these are the best zones in the market to look for reversals. So this is our zone right here. If it's red, we're looking to sell. If it's green, because it has a trend filter built in, we're looking to buy. So with those uh, two trend setups, we're looking to sell a trend, an outer edge slingshot, or a zone breakout. If, there, if the zone is red, we're looking for sells. Yellow trigger candle here on the zone breakdown, and yellow trigger here on the outer edge slingshot. A failure trade, I'll show you in a second what it looks like. But let's go through yesterday's price action. So if this is a zone and it's red, the outer edge slingshot is one of my favorite setups in the room. It's where the market, the S&P or whatever market you look at, gets stretched and it closes outside of my outer zone by at least one candle. It closes outside by one candle. Yesterday at 10.05, this candle formed yellow. As soon as this candle closed, it turned yellow. It will, it's live in the room. It's a leading indicator. It's not a lagging indicator. As soon as it turns yellow, that is your trigger or entry bar for a possible nice short setup. That's called an outer edge slingshot. The outer edge has to get to this outer zone here. Let's take these crosshairs off. So it has to get to this outer zone in order to be a, uh, for this yellow candle form. It's got to close outside my outer zone and see that candle close back inside. Uh, this uh, came up live yesterday on this exact bar at that level. So yesterday, your fill, cup of, uh, plus or minus couple ticks, was 51.16. And on the first push, it got all the way down to 91, which was my target. And I'll show you how I came up with this target in the room. At 8.30 in the morning over here, I gave a target of 51.90 all the way down here. 
and you're probably asking how for you new traders how did I come up with the target all the way down here from this zone break this outer edge trade and this zone break if you go back in the chat room before this even came down to 90 I was chatting in the room which I'll show you you can scroll back and look at it at this zone breakdown this outer edge zone break my target was 90 from 90 I said my target was 72 and that gap filled also I'll show you how how I projected that with market profile so that's the first one outer edge slingshot that's the first outer edge slingshot that's the setup if you get to the outer zone the second setup is a zone breakdown what if the market never is too weak what if the market is too weak and doesn't retrace to a deep retracement that's when we come to this zone breakdown what a zone breakdown is it's with the trend so outer edge trades are always with zone trend and the zone breakouts are always with zone trend so you're not counter trend trading the market you're always with zone trend what you want to see is is you want to see it you see these little uh, levels that that trail price they're leading indicators they will form horizontal dots as long when they start forming a horizontal dots you got a breakout that's forming once it closes two candles below those horizontal dots after going vertical then you're going to get a zone breakdown when the yellow candle forms now this oscillator below you probably ask well what's this oscillator below this oscillator below will confirm if when a zone breakdown comes in if you're in a weaker market if you noticed when we had the outer edge trade we got into a weaker market by going below a negative 100 it comes down it does like a little cup inverse cup and handle and then it starts flatlining that is a weaker market so the outer edge was confirmed with our oscillator below showing it's a weaker market we get a little retracement comes back down we get into weaker market below negative 100 again based upon our zone breakdown going into our zone breakdown so this oscillator oscillators are pretty much worthless by themselves oscillators by themselves are worthless but they're great for confirmation with our zone breakouts and our outer edge trades and our failure trades because it tells you if you're in a weaker or stronger market so when I got these yellow bars that formed it tells you if you're in a weak or strong market now I'm going to show you how I got these targets in a second but let's go through the trading day so then we come out to the outer edge again we have we had three big outer edge trades yesterday it was three for three yesterday in the entire session I'll show you in a second I'll, I'll, I'll show you from midnight all the way to four o'clock it closed a couple candles outside of my outer zone remember we had this tested with an artificial intelligence program going back 30 years well statistically we know these are the top zones out there uh, statistically on the S&P we tested the S&P on it so you can tell the S&P comes up is you get close a couple candles outside of it. it's got to be at least one candle you get one candle that closes back inside of it we do have an indicator and a strategy for this the indicator will fire an alarm on your computer it beeps like a doorbell when this comes up that yellow candle the doorbell will beep knowing that you get a possible trade set up and then it comes down comes back up close outside get a yellow bar outer edge trade huge potential in this one 92 all the way down into the 60s 30 point hit on the S&P then we come along we get into these dots that start forming see these dots form never broke down that's a zone breakdown but these did these start forming here start forming horizontal dots it's got to close two candles below it that's a fake breakdown so my yellow bar did not form in the retreating room it started breaking down but did not close two candles so it waited it waited two candle close the yellow bar formed are we in a weaker market on the oscillator below to confirm the push go over top the yellow candle yes we are it forms that little inverse cup and handle then starts flatlining for a hard trend and the market starts moving down then we come into the next trade setup tries to form another zone breakout breakdown but no does not then we get into my time of day trade I call this the power hour power hours in the morning I like power hour from 9 to 10 or 3.30 to 4.10. I, I tell traders all the time, 3.50 to 4.10 is a big possible push in the market. 
The S&P right here, you, what you'll see is a lot of these algorithms. The volume really picks up at 350. Once again, 350 comes in. We have a trend change. We go from green zone to a red zone to green zone. We're looking to buy now. My dots formed a horizontal line. My yellow bar candle trigger formed right there for the breakout at 50, 80 and a half. And we rally all the way up to 91 for over 11 points on a nice push into the close. Look at my oscillator below. It confirmed the breakout when the yellow bar formed. We had the oscillator get above, pause up 100, gives a little cup and handle, starts flatlining. When it starts flatlining, you know your hard trend. You're good to go. We get into today's trading. Today's trading, we start forming. The zone is up. The green zone is up. There's no shorts at all today. No failure trades. This is the only short trade we'd have against trend number three. But this is its own breakout again. These dots formed all the way back last night. Broke out this morning at three, almost 3 o'clock in the morning when the London market opened. We broke out at 50.92 and a quarter. And it's been a swing high. has been 51.14. Uh, so it's been over a 64-point uh, move on the S&P from my breakout. We had another breakout here to candle close. You had another shot at it at 7.12 this morning at 51.07 and a quarter. It didn't turn yellow bar because I got these yellow dots are a trail in the strategy. Right now, we're looking for another breakout that comes here. Play two candle close at 51.15. All right, if you want to look at the failure trade, let me find a failure trade for you, what that looks like. That's a get zone trend. We had a big one in the S&P last week. Uh, here's a failure. Here's a, here's a failure. I marked, marked it up. So a failure trade will be opposite of the zone. So these are zone breakouts with the trend. So you got the trend, stronger market, a little mini cup and handle, flat line, mini cup and handle, flat line. You got a breakout right there, the zone breakout. But this is a failure. Notice the yellow candle goes against zone trend. This is when the oscillator below, what it does is this. And I pointed this out. Derek, we did this trade last week before it happened. You had a nice trade off this last week. I said, as this was forming up here, we were talking about it before it happened. I was talking about it here. I said, the only possible trade you have is a failure trade because we broke out a market profile. This oscillator would have to come up, stay below 40, which it did. It was 33.63. And then crash stack below negative 100, a yellow bar would form. <clears throat> and that is a corrective wave that was what uh, 23 and three quarters all the way down to 17 and a half potential you'll notice the failure is the only corrective wave or counter trend trade that we have in the room the zone breakout and the uh, outer edge trade is with trend so right now we are looking for trend trades only right now trend trades if this oscillator would come down uh, below negative 100 then spike below 40 and then get a reversal you would have a failure that came up but right now we're looking for a buy breakout we're looking for a buy breakout right now I can make this a uh, trail shorter so you can see when the all these yellow bars come up uh, let me see here let me do that real quick So that's the three setups we have in the trade room, the outer edge slingshot, the zone breakout, and the failure setup. So those are three. Now, how do I come up with targets? Targets are this. Now, yesterday in the room, we were sitting right here in the morning. We're sitting here at 8.30 when I was on the mic, or yesterday typing the room. We're sitting right there. And I was typing in the room. I typed in the room right here, <clears throat> what, 906. <clears throat> so 906, right there is when I typed this in the room. How did I know these targets were potential targets for the day? So 906 was right there. So 906. I said the ES needs to break the 14 level. Then the next target is 90. So we had 
24 point potential based upon my market profile. And then at 1030, I said the next gap in the market is 90 to 72. So let's take a look at the first gap when I said at 906, the ES needs to break 14 level, the next target is 90. So at this level, I said we need to break 14. 14 was this level right here. We broke 14 and we got the zone breakdown that happened here. The outer edge trade that happened here with trend because we're breaking down zone. So the zone breakdown happened. I just showed you there. Outer zone happened here. Zone breakdown, zone breakdown. Went all the way down to 89 on the first push. 89. My target was 90. All the way up. I was at 5120 and I had a target in the room of 90. All right? Of 90. I'm sorry, is that 51.16 of 90? So I was 26 points away from the target. How did I come up with that? Well, I use my market profile. What we can do is look at the current profile that's profiling the market because this is not my opinion, it's not your opinion. This is all the participants in the market. And I don't use a 30-minute market profile. That's for to me for novice traders. 30-minute market profile does not profile the market. It does not show you market structure. I use a longer profile to catch these swings. So how did I come up with 90 on this first push? So the projection was here, all the way down to there, and it hit it. We had several zone breakdowns and hit it. I said if we break the 90 level, the next target was going to be 72 on this zone here. It broke. And we got down to this lower zone too. How did I come up with that? Well, I looked at the previous market profiles. And you really just got to go two days back to do this. And we have this with the trading software. So if you notice what I did yesterday in the room, I put a big line across right there. That was the control point, the most volume traded two days ago. Or that was a yesterday or one day ago. And there's my next target. And then three days back or two days back, as of yesterday, here's my other target. So there were my big gaps in the market. So let me erase these. So what I noticed is there's big gaps in the market right here. You can find gaps in the market where your targets are for the day on the S&P, and they're extremely accurate. Ask any member who uses the market profile. It's worked since 1985 for 39 years, and it is phenomenal at catching these gaps in the market. So when you see gaps in the market, there's big holes in the market. Look at the price action when I said if we break 14, our target is 90. Vertical. Look at the price action for this big gap in the market when I said if we break 90, our target is 72. Vertical. So you want to trade these zone breakdowns, these outer edge trades, and try to find the gaps in the market. So that's how we can do it. So that's why I have this in the room. I have this in the room right here to let us know targets in the market. So I know if I break out two candle close above on my zone breakout here, which is coming up, it's one candle right now, it's about ready to form two candle close. If I break out at that level, not one sec, let me give one contract so I can show these yellow bars. I didn't do that. If I break out of that level, right now a yellow bar will form. Here you go, I'll put it up for you guys. I, I had a long-term 1,000 tick target out, guys. That's why the trailing will still hit. There we go. Now I just have an eight tick target, so you can see all the yellow bars. Right there's a yellow bar that formed. It just formed right now, the yellow trigger. Now let's take a look at our market profile. Right, we had entry there. Entry here, entry here. All right, let's take a look at our market profile on the projection, where this thing can go. Well, I'm right at high HVA of yesterday. That's high value area. It's got to get through this level. Oops, right there. So I got resistance at 15 and a half. I got to get through 15 and a half. If I get through 15 and a half, let me find my target for the day. I already know my target for the day. What's my target? Very simple. I don't use 30-minute market profile like everybody else uses out there. 
I use an institutional market profile. I look at longer profiles. I look for two to four hour profiles. So what I do is, is I find out where the next major level is. Right there, there's my gap. My big gap in the market, if I break 15 and a half today, there's my gap in the market, there's my target. There's my gap. 15 and a half, the target on the S&P today, the first target is gonna be 51.35. Right? Here's my other targets, a control point, if it gets through that, and there's my HVA. So what you can do is you can use market profile to find out where your big gaps are in the market. There's not a big gap from the control point here to the, to the, um, to the high value area, but there's a huge gap right here, isn't there? From high value to low value. Look at that big gap. That's how I called those big gap targets yesterday, and I was dead on. Called those way before they even happened. Two hours before they happened. That's because market profile, it shows all the participants in the market. And like I said, that has nothing to do with me, nothing to do with you. It's not our opinions. That's taking all the algorithms, Goldman Sachs, all of them. Takes the Delta program, all the algos out there. And it spits out market structure. This is the roadmap in the market. Okay, so we know if we clear 15 and a half to 35, we're going to get some nice zone breakouts. Right now, we're in the resistance right here. It's resistance, right? It's got to get through that. If it breaks through that, we should start cranking, and our target's going to be 35. Now, if it does it, if it fails, we get back inside of HBA and retest HBA. My target's all the way down to low value area. And then the last 39 years, if I'm out, if I'm outside of HVA and I get back inside it by a whole candle, my target's all the way down here for the day, 95 and a half. We see that happen time and time again also.